Okay, are you are you still there? You're just yeah, I'm still listening. here. I'm You're just... just listening to me rant. That's, okay. Yes. Um, I'm gonna keep <clears throat> my finger right here so if you try. <laughs> ow! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> And the, the movie starts out with the cars, which is always a bad sign. <laughs> um, All I Want Is You, or, or uh, you know, whatever that song is. I, I have both cars. They're just all... Yeah, they just every, have one every, song. What's that? The cars. They only have the one song. That's true. That's true. Uh, you know, and some people can get away with doing one song their entire career, and it's pretty good. Like John Mellencamp, the, you know, I think he had one song for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> And it, but it was a good song, so you could get away with it. The car. Do, 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 do. Shut up. I know it's not. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> can, can we play, Doctor? <laughs> Here, if I can use my pen. <laughs> Ow. I was Ow. always <laughs> terrible at that as a child because I was like, I think I have a tumor. <laughs> you wouldn't tell where it was, huh? <laughs> nope, nope, gotta I've been, keep guessing. I've, I've been vomiting a lot of blood lately. Um, so two of our characters... I don't want to lose my kids. <laughs> oh, here's um, my penis, I guess. <laughs> so mutated blood. Right. The action movie with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. Not the sci-fi game show. No. I What? <laughs> There's a sci-fi game show where people come and they compete for science fiction and fantasy makeup. Anyway. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I do know that. Uh, but the, uh, right, yes, the, uh, the uh, uh, John Woo movie. They, yeah, they're pulled over by John Candy um, after failing to stop um, and speeding and avoiding. I'm not doing that. <laughs> because, the, you know, the conceit of this movie is that they're going to fake this wedding to get past INS in order to keep her in the country. And, and you know, like many people do, I've known people who've done this, who, you know, get a green card through the marriage thing and then uh, get a divorce after a year or two and, and, and the person is allowed to live in the country because our immigration laws are ridiculous. Don't name the, any names. You don't no, know who might be listening not. to our podcast. Just kidding. No, no one's listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in any Ooh. case, <laughs> got really sad. Uh, well, what the hell was the point I was making? <laughs> uh, something about the conceit of this movie. Yeah. This might be an experimental episode since I'm pretty uh, pretty out of it. Fucking high. Trippin' balls. Trippin' balls. All right, so do you have... I, I hear the dogs are about to attack it's you, so... It's the damn dog downstairs. <laughs> this, you know, this, this happens all the time. <laughs> that fucking dog. And that's Caesar, the dog downstairs. That fucking dog. Are you high? No. Today is the day you got high, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little high on muscle relaxants, but this is prescribed. Just get comfortable, Michael. I am so comfortable. Everything is fuzzy. I just want to pet you right now. Is that okay? I just want to pet you. You look so <laughs> soft. The... <laughs> Actually, this is true of pretty much everyone in the world. If the reception starts going out on their cell phone, they speak more loudly so that you will be able to understand them, which is totally... I always just, it's, it, I always just speak slower because I assume that there's like happening in the middle of my words. <laughs> so I'm like, if I just make every word eight syllables, then at least half of those are going to come through. Right. That's what I do with foreigners, too. Yes. <laughs> Repeat everything slower and at a higher pitch. Yeah, and if I know that makes me uh, me understand French better. Yeah, if they speak Spanish for instance, you also add an o to the end of every word. While you look at your notes. The <laughs> same old song, same old song. Do, 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 do. All around the world, all around the world. Same old song. You ever have that feeling 
eyes, you know? I, I always think of that scene from Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I, have you seen that? Uh, no. Uh, Sidney Poitier has this scene with uh, his character's father, because the whole movie is, of course, you know, a uh, uh, black man dating a white woman and, and right. all the grief it's causing everyone around them. And, and his father begins to lay this guilt trip on him, saying, you know, I worked so hard to see that you had a good life and now you're throwing it all away and he's like and I work so hard and Sidney Poitier says and you should have because you brought me into the world god damn it and now this is my life to live right and I've always thought that's the truth you know it's like you don't owe Craig T. Nelson shit I was thinking about that the other day, I was like, why did that movie work and everything else that he tried afterwards with big over-the-top characters didn't? I don't know, I think they just like the character. <laughs> it's mystery for the ages. I think it was the velvet suit. Yeah, yeah. I'd wear that. Yeah. I ain't always knew, like, I always know what type and what brand of feminine hygiene products my romantic partners use. And, like, I think that that's actually something that sets me apart from most other romantic partners is knowing that and being able to go to the store and buy them without even having to ask which one or wander around that aisle or whatever all confused. Like, that's a super intimate thing to know about a person and to not really have any sort of connection still is, is a little I... bit weird. I agree. I just always go with something that has the weirdest sort of metaphor, like secret smile or whatever, you know? <laughs> That's, uh, I figure that way, even if it doesn't quite work, it'll at least, uh, it'll at least amuse them. It'll at least be funny. Right. Wait, is secret, the, uh, is secret smile a euphemism for vagina? I think that's something from Akewood. The one one of the characters has to go get tampons for his girlfriend and he's frozen in fear and he imagines all the horrible metaphors for tampons and douches and things like that. And I believe secret knowing smile or something like that is one of them. You were the one who was like, this was 1987. There were no <laughs> there were no parts 2 and 3 to any movie ever made. <laughs> 2003. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for Puppet Master, just okay, throw, I just, just make shit up. Right, just throw <laughs> shit out there. I think when this was made, we were in space with the Canadians building rocket ships, and no, but the um. And that was another thing that actually earned some points from me for this movie. I just, you know, if 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 they're not white, I just edit them out. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, that's how my brain works. That seems that seems like a reasonable nah. conclusion. Yeah, those guys were, were our Cabin in the Woods characters. How do you mean? Like, there was, you know, the serious one and the more hillbilly one. Okay. Um, that came in while the kids were there. Wait, which part of Cabin in the Woods are you relating to the more serious one and the hillbilly one? Are you thinking of Tucker or Dale versus oh, Evil? Oh, I am. Okay. Oh, my God. Delete that! <laughs> <laughs> You know, you, you did the Rain Man reference. <laughs> it's time for Penguin Analina. Angle, eh, penguin Analingus. It's really hard to say. <laughs> it is. Uh, penguin Analingus. That's, that's going to be my um, warm-up from now on. Oh, and you know what would be great is we could have... The villain could be... A, uh, what, what, what the hell? He, the villain could be a duck that he voices. There we go. Yeah, because, you know little little subtext there I, I don't know if i caught it <laughs> i might be being too subtle and i think it's a duck the idea being that it's a duck that looks exactly like the aflac duck and gilbert godfrey has to fight it and voice it do you okay you're still not okay gilbert godfrey was the voice of the aflac duck and then he oh. posted and then he tweeted a tweet that was somewhat offensive and it's like wow really gilbert godfrey was offensive what a fucking shock but aflac fired him Oh, hmm. yeah, I didn't know any of that. Okay, so there, I am a big Gilbert Godfrey fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you mention him almost in every podcast, so I was really glad when I watched this movie and he suddenly appeared. I was, I was like, yay. And I'm like, he's acting... I, the note that I put down is that uh, Ryan Reynolds' dad treats book editing as if it's male exotic dancing. And then one scene later, we got male exotic dancing, which I thought was interesting. And nobody <laughs> minds that Ramon does that. Right. Well, he's, like, he's, just, uh, he's just a Cuban guy. Nobody cares. Because it, it seems to me, for instance, say, 
if you and I just fell on a hamburger, uh-huh. it would be difficult to get it to eat at that point. And we'd get be the all hamburger messy. to eat us? Right. No, no, no. To eat to, For us to eat the hamburger. I would find a way. <laughs> I believe you. But it would be more difficult than it was worth when you could just tear the hamburger in two, much like a human, right? Um, how about use a machete or something? Well, that's, that's why the zombies are using machetes, I guess. Let me ask you this, Wilford slash Ford. Um, <laughs> are, are you... Oh my god, I just, I just realized, as I said that, looking at your G-chat that's open, that's where Ford comes from. <laughs> Will Ford. Yes, it is the second syllable. <laughs> <laughs> I was always like, was he really into Fords when he was younger and it just stuck? Or, but, okay. Um, so, uh, uh, oh hell I think that's because they... Not saying that rings are cool, but that might have been the only cool thing about this movie. <laughs> Sega! Boom, 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 Oh my god, I just remember my dream from the other night. It's about Toe Dam and Earl and opening gifts. <laughs> uh-huh. The other thing is, she's the world's only asshole Canadian. Yes. Where, where the hell were we going with it? What was the original point there? I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that plot, uh, and it was really, really good. What did you say? I was <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs>